Well, some of uh, the top international cyclists are set to descend again on Jamaica's western end for the third annual Jamaican International Cycling Classic. It will be from the 5th of April to the 7th. Ten international cycling teams are expected on the island, including the defending champions, Team 706 out of the USA, along with uh, club teams from Colombia, the Cayman Islands, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, and uh, possibly a team coming from Rwanda. The event was launched last Friday at Toyota Jamaica in Kingston. National cyclist Domain Douglas spoke about his participation in this year's event. It's pretty much trying to get top tens, I would say, more so, and reaching for whatever is possible. If podiums are possible, I'll definitely be, you know, my ambitions are high. I'm going for the biggest thing I can get. Uh, it was very hard racing and very a, a bit more professional racing, not what we get in Jamaica. So again, it's, it's, it's a big step forward for us Jamaicans and, of course, guys in the region. And Elon Parkinson of uh, Sponsors Digicel spoke about their involvement. Digicel in 2024, where the Jamaica International Cycling Classic is concerned, we're more than doubling our support. And that's primarily because the event itself has more than doubled the amount of competitors and participants it will have this time around. Indeed, with the international ratification of the tournament, it means that cycling has now been taken to a higher level. We're expecting just over 70 competitors this year. That's a record-breaking number for an event that just started out only just about three years ago. And Digicel's participation in the tournament is part of our broader mantra to move sports activities and their participants from grassroots to greatness. Uh, Elon Parkinson there, race director and tournament conceptualizer. Carlton Simmons joins us in studio to share more on this event. Welcome to the show, Carlton. And uh, let me first of all point out that you are prophetic because you did say last year that this event would eventually get um, endorsed by the International Cycling Union, and it has. Yes, it has. I mean, thanks for having me. Um, from day one, that was the main objective you know, to get the in event to a point where it can be ratified by the world governing body, and um, we have done it. Yeah, and Elon just mentioned, and you referenced it before we went on here live, that this is going to be the biggest one yet. Yes, it is. Um, we're looking to have 10 teams. I mean, tentatively about 15, but um, we will know by probably the end of the week if those other five teams will be coming. But as it is right now, we have the number one team out of Colombia, which is the top team in the North and South American region as a continental team that will be coming. I mean, that team is a team that have riders moving to the pro cat one um, status that rides like the Tour de France and events like that. So. That's a big team that is coming to us. Um, Cayman Island will be sending back a national team. We have a team coming out of Guyana. Um, the team out of the US with the previous winner, Andy Scarano, will be coming back. We'll be having four local teams taking part, but three of those teams will be composite teams. We'll be having riders from throughout the Caribbean being part of those teams. Yeah. So we'll be seeing, even from South America, so we have a rider from Ecuador, um, one from Chile, I think, that will be a part of that setup. Trinidad, Barbados, and Cayman will be a part of that setup. We will have a team out of Damrep that is coming. Um, Dutch St. Martin will be sending a team as well. And tentatively, we're looking at a team out of Guadeloupe and um, from Rwanda, which I am looking forward to see that team coming. I hope they can make it, but they have registered. But in terms of the, the travel itinerary, that has not been sent to us as yet. So I'm still um, hoping that we'll have them. Um, yeah. The number three continental team out of Panama and another continental, top continental team out of the US is tentative as well. So we will know by probably the end of the week yeah. if those teams will be coming. But all in all, the, the numbers has doubled in terms of the participation and not just 
local participation, but international participation coming here in Jamaica over the weekend. Yeah, and Lance used the word prophetic, but I'd have to say a lot of work has to go into this to get all these different countries and all these different riders interested in this event. What makes it so interesting? I think Brand Jamaica, for one, I mean, people hear about the island and want to see it. So I think it's a big push in that way. And once we got the ratification, it kind of put a different spin on the event. Because what you get now is teams reaching out to us. Yeah, that's what I realized. Wanting to take part in the event versus us sending out invitation. And the, the, the transformation has been so great where the event itself is one of three events that is new on the international calendar. So in essence, it's the newest event because the other two has been there before and left and came back. So the classic is the newest event that has been added to the international um, cycling calendar. But as race director, does that put any sort of pressure on you? Because now you have everybody, their eyes are on you. And of course, this competition, uh, everybody's, they want to be a part of it. That means you need to do even more work. I mean, it's, it's, it's work intensive, yes, but I think we have a good management team around it. Yeah, tell us that, about it. Um, work over time. I mean, the GenSec, I left my cap team, Ron, they, um, Ron Lindsay. He, he has been working overtime in terms of sending out the requests, sending out the letters, responding to everybody. I mean, Anna Hira, who is a staff with Digicel, she plays a very integral role as well. Yeah. Um, the treasurer, he is multitasking. I mean, Donna K. Sharp, who is from the JCF, the Cycling Federation, she also plays a big role in terms of even getting the ratification because she's the one who did the application for us from the Federation side. So we have a good group of people that is doing the work. And mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. putting the pieces together. <laughs> yeah. And I would suspect that part of the attraction for an event like this, Carlton, is not only the scenic route on, on Jamaica's north coast, but there are parts of the world who are still experiencing right here in March wintry conditions, places like Canada and so on. And I think a lot of the riders would enjoy being in some bright sunshine uh, for this event. It does. And I mean, even looking ahead, I think we're going to see, you know, teams coming to Jamaica to set up preseason camps. Yes, training before camps. Before the event and have an event to do which gives qualification point and good racing to test where they are in their training before moving on. So I think it speaks volume to the whole gamma of, of the cycling, you know? I, I, I see that you have some Trinis coming in. I know that, well, Nicholas Paul is probably the Caribbean's foremost cyclist at the moment, but he's a track competitor. But Campbell and, and others are, are road, road racers. Are some of these top Trinis listed here because I know they had some UCI events in this month so I'm not sure if they were available for this classic. Um, I think Campbell will be at the Pan Am Track Championships because he, yes. he's still in the Olympic qualification um, mode. set up and mode. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of the under 23 and elite, younger elite riders, road riders will be coming from Trinidad to be yeah. a part of this these composite team that I'm telling you about. So yes. It, it speaks volume for the region because, again, it gives them a platform to present themselves. Because one of the good things is that the more we get international teams coming to Jamaica and to the region, yes. it will get and give the athletes in the region a better looking mm -hmm. from these guys that says, hey, we need to contract this youngster he, he's, he's, he, he looks like somebody that you know can fit in our program yeah so I think in that way it will help big time for our riders in the region yeah all right Carlton great to have you um, setting the stage for this event it happens from the 5th to the 7th of April so we're you know 
less than two weeks away from this event. And um, I know that you are fine tuning some of the confirmed entries and so on. So uh, we look forward to speaking with you over the coming days to confirm all the riders that will be coming in. But as we said, it's an international event and there are a lot of riders coming from the rest of the region as well. Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, the Cayman Islands and so on. So um, Carlton, thanks again. We'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this.